Welcome to another discussion on probability. In the presentation Probability Part 1, we learned the fundamental concepts of probability. There, we found how to compute probability in some straightforward situations using the classical method. In this discussion, we shall extend our learning and consider more complex situations. It is our attempt to present these concepts in as simple a way as possible. I request your complete attention for the next 30 minutes. Through this discussion, we shall learn about mutually exclusive and non-exclusive events, dependent and independent events, joint and dependent probability, and the tree diagram approach to solving probability questions. Let us start with a question based on playing cards. Refer the question number 6 given. From a deck of cards, we pick a card. What is the probability that the card picked is either a black or a spade? Let us analyze the situation. In a standard deck of 52 cards, there are 26 black cards and 13 spades. We pick one card from the deck. The event under consideration is picking a black or a spade card. We can pick a card from the deck in 52 different ways. So the total number of possible outcomes when we pick a card is 52. We can pick a black card from the deck in 26 different ways. So the probability of picking a black card will be 26 divided by 52 which is 1 by 2. We can pick a spade from the deck in 13 different ways. So the probability of getting a spade when we pick a card from the deck will be 13 divided by 52 which is 1 by 4. So the probability that our event of picking a black or spade happens will be 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 which is 3 by 4. That is option A. Did you get this answer? If yes, think again. Check whether you have overlooked something here. See the figure given in the slide. The probability of picking a card is indicated by the rectangle. That probability is 1 because you will surely pick a card and so it is a sure event. The probability that the card you pick is black is 1 by 2. That is indicated by the oval within the rectangle. Probability that the card you pick is a spade is 1 by 4. Now, note where this is marked. It is completely within the first oval. That is because all the spades are also black. Hence, the probability that either of these happen is only 1 by 2 and not 3 by 4 as we had calculated earlier. This is so because while calculating the probability we should count an outcome only once. If we add the two areas without considering how they are positioned relatively, we would end up counting the common area twice. That would lead to a wrong answer. In order that we don't make this mistake, what we can do is to add the individual areas and subtract the common area once to nullify the possible double counting. That is, probability of black or spade equals probability of black plus probability of spade minus probability of black and spade occurring at the same time. Thus, the probability will be 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4 which is equal to 1 by 2. Now let us try another related question. From a deck of cards, we pick a card. What is the probability that the card picked is either a black or a diamond? In this case, the answer is 3 by 4 and not 1 by 2. 
This is so because the two sub-events, that of picking a black and that of picking a diamond, are mutually exclusive. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the occurrence of one rules out the occurrence of the other. In other words, mutually exclusive events will not occur at the same time. In this case, if we pick a black card, we can be sure that it will not be a diamond and if we pick a diamond, we can be sure that it will not be a black. So picking a black and picking a diamond are mutually exclusive events. In other words, probability of black and diamond occurring at the same time is zero. In the earlier question, the two sub-events were not mutually exclusive. Look at the diagram given. The two probabilities do not overlap and hence, when we add the two, there is no double counting of any sort. So, in the case of mutually exclusive events, to find the probability of at least one of those events happening, you can safely add the individual probabilities. If A and B are two events, then in general, we can say that probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. In the case of mutually exclusive events A and B, probability of A intersection B will be zero. So, probability of A or B becomes probability of A plus probability of B. It should be noted that the concept of mutually exclusive and mutually non-exclusive events is relevant only in cases where the events share the same sample space of the experiment. Now let us learn about joint probability and conditional probability. For that, it is important to understand the difference between independent and dependent events. Two events are said to be independent when the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. An example of independent events would be outcomes from tossing a coin and tossing a die. The outcome of the coin toss has no effect on the die and vice versa. If A and B are two independent events, then the probability of these two events occurring at the same time is the product of their unconditional probabilities. Mathematically, we denote it as probability of AB equals probability of A multiplied by probability of B. This probability, P of AB, which is the probability that the events A and B occur together is known as the joint probability of the two events A and B. Let us analyze this with the help of an example. Assume that you toss a die and coin simultaneously. What is the probability of getting a phi on the die and a head in the coin? Tossing of the die and the coin are unrelated activities and the outcome of one is completely independent of the other. So the probability of getting a phi on the die and a head in the coin will be equal to the probability of getting a phi multiplied by the probability of getting a head that is 1 by 6 into 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by 12. This can also be analyzed using our earlier approach. When you toss a die and a coin, there are a total of 12 equally likely outcomes. Take a look. Each of these 12 outcomes is equally likely and mutually exclusive. So the probability of getting a 5 and a head will be number of favorable outcomes divided by total outcomes, which is 1 by 12. Two events are said to be statistically dependent if the probability of one event 
is dependent on or is affected by the occurrence of the other event. Let us take a couple of real life examples. The probability of your winning a lottery will, amongst other things, depend on the probability of your buying a lottery. The probability of your having a grandchild will depend on the probability of your having a child. Let us understand the concept of conditional probability with the help of an example. It is a little long question, so listen carefully. There is a can containing 10 cubes of equal sizes. The cubes are of different kinds in terms of their color and the material they are made of. The details are as follows. One metal cube of red color, three plastic cubes of red color, four metal cubes of blue color, two plastic cubes of blue color. Now, closing your eyes, you pick a cube at random from the can. Given that the cube you picked from the can is blue in color, what is the probability that the cube that you had picked is made of plastic? Let us analyze the situation. Picking any of the 10 cubes from the can is equally likely. Of these 10 cubes, 4 of them are red in color and 6 of them are blue. So, the probability of picking a red cube from the can will be 4 by 10 or 0 0.4. Similarly, the probability of picking a blue cube from the can is 6 by 10 or 0 0.6. Of the 10 cubes, 5 are made of metal and 5 are made of plastic. So, the probability of picking a metal cube from the can will be 5 by 10 or 0 0.5 and the probability of picking a plastic cube from the can will also be 0 0.5. Now let us consider the problem 9a. Suppose the cube that you picked is blue in color what is the probability that it is made of plastic? That is, what is the probability that the cube you have picked is made of plastic given that the cube you picked is blue? This is what we call conditional probability. It is expressed symbolically as shown in the slide and read as probability of plastic given blue. The cube picked is given to be blue. That is something that has already happened. So we need not consider the red cubes in our analysis. Let us observe the cubes in the can a bit more closely. How many blue cubes were there in the can? There were six of them. Out of those, two are made of plastic and four are made of metal. So the probability that the blue cube picked is made of plastic is 2 out of 6 which is 0 0.33. Note that this probability is not the same as the simple probability of a cube picked from the can at random being made of plastic. That probability we had found earlier to be 0 0.5. Now let us attempt the question 9b based on the same set of 10 cubes. What is the probability that the cube you picked is made of plastic given that the cube that you had picked is red in color? This is expressed symbolically as shown in the slide and red as probability of plastic given red. The cube picked is given to be red. That is something that has already happened. So we need not consider the blue cubes anymore. When we analyze the cubes in the can closely, we can see that there are a total of four red cubes. Out of those, three are made of plastic and one is made of metal. So the probability that the red cube picked is made of plastic is three out of four, which is 0 0.75. Note that this probability is different from the probability that we found out in question 9a. 
observe the statistical dependency. In the situation given here, the likelihood of a cube being made of plastic varies depending on the color. Red cubes are more likely to be made of plastic than the blue cubes. From these examples, we would be able to derive a useful general formula for conditional probability in the case of dependent events. Please pay attention. Let us go back to question 9b. Given that the cube picked from the can is red in color, what is the probability that the cube is made of plastic? We had found the value of this probability as 3 divided by 4 or 0 0.75. This 3 in the numerator is the number of red cubes made of plastic and the denominator 4 is the number of red cubes. Divide numerator and denominator both by 10, the total number of cubes in the container. What we have now in numerator is 3 by 10, which is the probability that the cube picked is both made of plastic and red in color. What we have in the denominator is 4 by 10, which is the probability that the cube picked is red in color. Thus, probability that the cube picked is made of plastic given that it is red equals join probability of the cube being plastic and red divided by the probability that the cube is red. In general, if A and B are two dependent events, then the conditional probability of A given B is equal to join probability of A and B divided by probability of B. From that relation, we can also say that join probability of A and B equals conditional probability of A given B multiplied by probability of B. If the events A and B are independent like what we had seen in question 8, then the probability of occurrence of event A is not affected by the occurrence or non-occurrence of event B. Then, probability of A given B will be same as probability of A. When A and B are independent, then the joint probability of A and B or the probability that A and B happens together equals probability of A multiplied by probability of B. It is highly possible that you are a little confused with all these. This happens even with the best of the students. You need to spend time and apply the learning to retain these concepts. It is recommended that you listen to these slides again, pausing wherever necessary. Can you try to find the answers to the four practice questions given? You pick a cube at random from our container with the 10 cubes. What is the probability that the cube picked is red in color given that it is made of plastic? What is the probability that the cube picked is blue in color given that it is made of metal? What is the probability that the cube picked is made of plastic given that it is made of metal? What is the probability that the cube picked is red in color given that it is made of metal? Try it out yourself. The answers are given in the slide. Did you get your answers correct? If not, go back and listen to the discussion once again. Before we end this presentation, we shall discuss one more useful method of tackling probability questions, the probability tree diagram approach. A probability tree helps us to represent all possibilities very clearly using a diagram. 
It is very useful when we have to consider a sequence of dependent events. We shall understand this approach to problem solving with the help of a question. This is a little long question. I shall narrate it for you. Please listen carefully. Miss Reno is a working woman with two school-going children. She goes to her office after sending her children to school. The one thing she loves more than anything is to sleep. And very often she wakes up later than planned and then she rushes with the morning activities or skips some of them altogether. She has to catch a bus and a rickshaw to reach her office. Because of all these, she does not always reach the office in time. From her past experience, she has observed the following. On an average, she wakes up late on 4 out of 10 working days. If she wakes up late, the probability that she reaches the office late is 0.7. Even if she wakes up in time, she may be late for work and the probability that she reaches the office late despite waking up in time is 0.2. What is the probability that she will reach the office in time on any given day? The likelihood of Miss Renu reaching late for work is amongst other things dependent on whether she wakes up later than planned or not. Even if she wakes up as planned, there is still a possibility of her reaching the office late because of other reasons. The situation can be understood better with the help of a tree diagram. It is given that, on a working day, she wakes up later than planned on 4 out of 10 occasions. So, the probability that she wakes up late on a working day is 4 divided by 10, which is 0.4. That means, the probability that she wakes up in time will be 1 minus 0.4 or 0.6. We can indicate these in the tree diagram as shown in the slide. When Ms. Reno wakes up late, the probability that she reaches the office late is given as 0.7. That means, even when she wakes up late, she may reach the office in time. The probability for that will be 1 minus 0.7 or 0.3. If she wakes up in time, the probability of her being late is given as 0.2. That means that if she wakes up in time, the probability that she reaches the office in time will be 1 minus 0.2 or 0.8. These can be indicated in the tree diagram as shown in the slide. We are interested in finding the probability of Miss Renu reaching the office in time. Miss Renu can reach the office in time under two situations. She wakes up in time and reaches the office in time and she wakes up late and still reaches the office in time. Waking up in time and waking up late cannot happen together. As such, these two are mutually exclusive. So, the probability that Miss Renu reaches the office in time equals probability that Miss Renu reaches the office in time when she wakes up late plus probability that Miss Renu reaches the office in time when she wakes up in time. The joint probability of Miss Renu waking up late and reaching the office in time will be equal to probability that she wakes up late multiplied by conditional probability that Renu reaches the office in time given that she wakes up late. Hope you remember the joint probability relation that we learned earlier in case of dependent events. This is simply that. From the diagram, this can be obtained directly by multiplying the probability values along the path shown in blue in the slide. The joint probability of Ms. Renu waking up in time and reaching the office in time 
will be equal to probability that she wakes up in time multiplied by conditional probability that Renu reaches the office in time given that she wakes up in time. Here also, this can be obtained directly by multiplying the probability values along the path shown in blue in the tree diagram. So, the probability that Ms. Renu reaches the office in time equals probability that Ms. Renu reaches the office in time when she wakes up late plus probability that Ms. Renu reaches the office in time when she wakes up in time. This will be 0.12 plus 0.48 which is 0.6. Thus, the probability of Ms. Renu reaching the office in time on any given day at random is 0.6. That is, there is 60% chance that Renu reaches the office in time. The tree diagram approach is useful when we have to consider a sequence of events as seen in this case. It would be good if you note a couple of things here. While drawing the tree diagram, outcomes or events are written at the node or at the end of the branch and the probability of the outcome or the event is indicated along the branch. Typically, the outcomes or the events that branch out from a node are collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive. Thus, the probabilities along the different branches that branch out from a node will add up to 1. Before we end this presentation, let me remind you once again that we have learned a few important probability concepts in this discussion. Some of these concepts may seem confusing to the first-time learner. Repeated listening and solving more problems is the only way to ensure that what you learned stays with you. Thank you.